I've got something new that I worked on here with PH Tool. This is a corrosion test plate. I've mentioned my collaborations with PH Tool a few times on this channel, but this one is not a calibration block. This one is a performance demonstration and training tool. On the underside of this plate is machine corrosion. If we take a look at that really closely, PH Tool has come up with a proprietary machining process involving CNC milling and abrasive finishing to perfectly and realistically create artificial corrosion. The plate has a number of features designed into it. One is on the top side, we've got a grid machine and you can see that the lettering on the horizontal and the vertical axes are paint filled so you can see them better. There's a built-in step wedge on the right-hand side. This plate is made out of aluminum and it's uh, 3 eighths of an inch thick. So the step wedge part that we've got machine goes from 075 to 0.375. You can get these in other materials like steel. This one being aluminum is nice and light, so it's easy to carry around for training and there's less risk of hurting yourself if you drop it on your foot. Let's get down to usage. The key thing here is that this is a training and demonstration tool. So in your NDT career, when you start out as a trainee learning how to take thickness doinks, uh, your UT level one, you're actually doing the thickness doinks. Uh, hold on. Yeah, hello NDT, this is Paul. Hey man, what's up? What are you doing? Uh, I was doing a video. I was talking about taking UT thickness doinks. What do you mean you can't say that? I've said that forever. Doinks. It's like thickness testing. Uh, yeah. Doinks? Doinks means something else. Um, okay. Uh, I'll edit it out. What would you guys say? Uh, over here, we, we, we call that popping a shot. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can't say pop a shot. Uh, that definitely has bad connotations. Um, tell you what I'll do. I will edit this out, and I will just revert to calling it just taking UT thickness shots. That's probably the safe bet. All right, man. Well, I'll let you get back to your video. I'll holler at you later. All right. Cheers. Bye. As you go through your NDT career, starting as a trainee, probably learning how to do thickness testing, UT level one, doing thickness testing, UT level two, doing thickness testing, and probably some shear wave weld inspection, and then UT level three, probably writing procedures, doing some shear wave, and also doing thickness readings. UT thickness is not going away for you. So it's really important that we know how to do this well and know how to demonstrate it well. This means that we've got to be trained right. And the first time that you do UT thickness readings on something realistic can't be in the field. It's got to be done during training. If you're an employer and you're qualifying your technicians to a written practice, or you work at a refinery and you're verifying the competency of the NDT services that you bring in, you need something that allows the individual to prove their skills. Enough talking, more scrubbing. Let's fire up the wave and get this thing started. I'll use an Olympus D790 dual crystal transducer, and I'll use one of these gray silicone cables from Echo Ultrasonics. By now, I've pretty much replaced all of my regular old black cables with these gray silicone ones from Echo. I'll start off the grid over here where it's 375, and then I'm gonna move it into the grid right here. You can see that the echo envelope, the red line immediately jumps to the left. And that's basically the game. You just kind of move the probe around inside of each little grid cell, trying to push that red line as far to the left as possible. The minimum spot, that's the reading you're going to write down. Now I'm only using first back wall echo on the screen right now. I've shown this before on my dually video, uh, trying to do echo to echo on a dually is kind of a pain in the butt. So we're just going to use first back wall for now. Besides, this is not coded. And right around here, we find the minimum spot for this plate, which happens to be about 118 thousandths. And keeping with the theme of the last couple of videos, let's break out the hydroform. Do you do performance demonstrations or should you for folks doing hydroform? It's probably not a bad idea. I've designed that the shape of the plate and the location and size of that grid so that you can fit a hydroform on it and it won't fall off the sides. Now I scanned this plate as soon as I got it. You can see the response here is really good and we can identify the location of the deepest spot here in this cell. Basically the same reading as we had with conventional UT as it should be. One of the neat artifacts of the machined grid on the top of this is that hydroform is so sensitive it picks that up if you lower the gate really, really far. So if you do that, it'll pull that grid image up and show it to you on the C-scan. 
Notice the location of minimum remaining wall is entirely within one grid cell. That's done on purpose. I hate it when you have ambiguous test specimens where it could be in Battleship G6, but it's also kind of in Battleship G5. I've designed it so that everything lines up within entirely within one grid cell. So there's really no argument. It's much clearer for the student and it's much easier for the instructor. A number of different corrosion patterns are going to be available on these. If you're interested, reach out to PH Tool. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.